everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to be trying something that I actually already tried once, which is following a Bob Ross painting tutorial. Now if you didn't see the first video where I tried this, I'll leave a link in the description below, but this is the finished product of the painting that I made, and honestly it didn't turn out terrible, but it definitely could have been better. I'm gonna tell you right now, the main lesson that I learned from following that first Bob Ross tutorial is that linseed oil and olive oil are very much not interchangeable. So keeping that lesson in mind, I'm gonna give myself a second chance. I picked out a new video to follow. Unfortunately, I still don't have any liquid white, but I do have liquid clear, I have titanium white, and I have linseed oil. So hopefully with those three items, I can concoct something that at least somewhat resembles liquid white. Honestly, as long as it works better than the olive oil, I can already say with confidence that we are in fact making progress. But anyways, I'm gonna try not to make this intro 10 minutes long like all the rest of my intros, so I'm gonna go grab my palette, my paints, and we're gonna get started. Alright, well I haven't even started putting paint on the canvas yet and I already have a problem. The paints that I was planning on using for this video are from an actual Bob Ross painting kit that my mom used to have, but unfortunately those paints are very old and therefore very thick, so I'm not entirely sure if they're gonna work or not, but I still have the cheap ones that I used for the last video, so those will be my fallback. But either way, we're just gonna have to work with what we've got and try our best. Yellow was quite transparent. There. I'm in a bright, happy mood today. It's a good day to be alive. So let's do a painting that reflects that. Shoot, every day's a good day to be alive. There we are. Maybe a little bit of it down here. What's okay, well, I can definitely see why he said to use a very small amount of yellow because I definitely did not follow that instruction and my yellow is extremely overpowering. I did just go and wipe a bunch of the yellow paint off my brush, so hopefully that helps, but this is... This is definitely not looking like his yet. Just tap a little bit into the bristles, like so. Like so. And we'll go right up above this. And I'm just going to lay in a little bit of crimson. I don't know about this, Bob. Using red requires a lot of confidence that I'm not sure I have. You know, it's a good thing you guys get to see a time-lapse version of this because I've definitely been blending this sky for a solid 40 minutes and I'm sure you don't want to watch that. But honestly, this brush, as good as it is, is getting brush hairs everywhere and it's making this take exponentially longer than it needs to because I keep having to pick them off the canvas. So yeah, let's all just be thankful for the invention of the time-lapse. That's really what painting's all about, is just enjoy yourself. Okay, little phthalo blue, and I still have the same old dirty brush. Let's go right on back up in here. Okay, see, this is where things are gonna go horribly wrong because now that we have blue getting involved, that means that all three primary colors are gonna be on this canvas, which means that I could blend them all into a ginormous mess of brown. So we're just gonna hope that that doesn't happen. Okay, that is a lot of blue. Don't think I needed that much, but we're just gonna hope I can blend it out. Okay, I know this looks kind of horrific on camera, but I promise it looks about 12,000 times
sometimes better in person, but I think we're basically done with the sky and the water, and Bob just told me to go wash my brush, so I'm gonna go do that, and then I'll be back. Brush one more time. Shake it up. Cover all the camera people. And off we go. Let's put us a little mountain up here. Yay, okay. mountains are my favorite mm, part. We're gonna use, we're gonna use some midnight black, some Van Dyke brown, a lizard and crimson, a little Prussian blue. Good dark color. Mix it up, pull it out very flat, cut off our little roll of paint. Now then, you gotta make your first big major decision. Where does your mountain live in your world? Maybe, maybe your mountain lives right there. Well, it sure does now. Firmly push that right into the fabric. Just really push. Like so. The excess paint. Take a two inch brush and we grab that. Once again, the canvas is wet, we can move color. We can absolutely move color. All right, hang on Bob, I don't know what I did with my two inch brush. Got it, what do I do now? Now if you're on a dry canvas and you try to pull this paint, you're gonna be in Agony City. I don't wanna be in Agony City, Bob. That's one of the reasons that I stress so much that we use a pre-stretched double prime canvas. If you use a canvas board or canvas paper, it will absorb your liquid white and you'll, you'll be left with a dry surface. And we depend on this being wet through the entire painting. There we go. Now then, let's put some... All right, I feel like I need a smaller brush than this because he said a two inch brush and I think this is a two inch brush, but it is definitely far too big. All right, Bob, I've finished building my mountain. What's okay. next? Now then, let's put, some, let's put some snow on that mountain. We'll take some white. We'll All right, them. hang on, Bob. I don't know what I did with my white now. Just kidding, it's on my palette. Least little touch of alizarin crimson put in there just to warm it up. The least, least little amount. Don't want to set it on fire. Pull it out very flat. Get strong with it. Very flat. Go straight down. Cut off our little roll of paint. Okay. Now then, you have to make some big decisions. In my world, I think the light's gonna... Okay, Bob, you need to be more specific when you say a very small amount because I clearly used too much red and it was barely any. Well, that certainly doesn't look right, but you know what? We're just gonna roll with it. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I feel like my mountains are a little too high because this comes down very close to the water and I'm not sure if that's supposed to happen, but we're gonna make it work. All right, I'm not gonna lie, I have absolutely no idea how much of this didn't get filmed. Apparently at some point my camera died and I didn't notice. I don't think I missed all that much, but I went and charged my battery, I took a break for a little while, and now we're back at it. Okay, and maybe back in here in our world, there lives a lot of little distant trees and all you're doing is- All right, I need my fan brush. Found my fan brush, now let's make some distant little trees. I don't know what it is about these tiny little trees that he always does in the background, but clearly I'm just not very good at them. Because this is wet, all you have to do is grab it and pull it straight down, straight down, like so. See there? Straight down. And then very lightly come across. 
<clears throat> Isn't that fantastic? See how you can move those? All right, time to make a reflection. I feel like this is where everything is going to go horribly wrong. Bob, you're going too fast. Oh my goodness, when did you get three trees there? I've, what? Okay, hang on, hang on. I've only done one tree, not even. Bob, how are you creating trees out of nothing so quickly? Got a friend right there, this is Clyde, he lives there. And we just push up, see what, that easy, we can make a little peninsula that comes right out, see how that- Bob, I don't understand how you are creating something out of nothing right now. Like, where did that come from? There wasn't an island there two seconds ago. I don't understand. I haven't even made a tree yet. I'm only putting one over there. I know you made three, Bob, but I'm not that talented. I'm not gonna lie, at this point I'm just making stuff up because Bob definitely did not tell me to put a tree here yet and I don't know if he will, but there's gonna be a tree there. All right, I think we've made it to the point in the video where I've kind of just started going rogue and no longer am listening to what Bob Ross tells me to do. In my defense, I would be doing what he told me to do if I thought I was capable, but you know what? I don't think I am, so I'm just making it up. All right, I'm not gonna lie, I just took like a two hour break to go rest and eat some food and it is now about 3.30 in the morning and I have effectively lost all motivation. So I think what I'm gonna do is just abandon the video entirely and just kind of wing it and try to make this look as good as I possibly can without actually following the tutorial anymore. There's a very good chance that this could go horribly wrong but the rest of the video is probably just gonna be a time lapse and then you'll see the finished result at the end of the video. Alright, so this is the finished painting and let's just be honest, 
It's not great. In my defense, it's currently 7 a.m. and I still haven't slept yet, so I kind of just ended up slapping paint on a canvas until I came up with something that could somewhat be considered a finished result. It's definitely not the worst thing I've ever made, but honestly, I think the first one I painted might have been better. I really like the way the mountains and the sky turned out, but aside from that, it's definitely not great. Who knows, maybe at some point I'll try following another Bob Ross tutorial, but for right now, I'm gonna go get some sleep. So that's it for this video, but if you liked it, make sure you give it a big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down below to become a Tori Dactyl, and leave me a comment letting me know what I should do for future videos. As always, I'll leave the links to my social medias in the description below, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!